Welcome to 3D Printing News. I'm your host, Mike, and I try to keep everybody up to date with the latest happenings in 3D printing or just anything I find interesting. So if you're new around here, I do host 3D Printing News every single Friday at 6 a.m. Arizona time. So if that's something you're interested in, be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on those alerts, hit that like button, and comment down below what you would like to see in next week's episode. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the news. So it's been making the rounds that the Bamboo Lab H2C has actually had a heated bed that doesn't really heat properly or the temperature has huge fluctuations depending on what part of the bed you actually read. Now this originally started with 3D Printing Nerd when he put out his review of the Bamboo Lab H2C and he took out like a thermal imaging camera and basically showed that certain parts were pretty shaky when it came to temperature and it wasn't really accurate and he compared it to the Prusa XL. Well, he has actually come out with an update basically saying that his findings were incorrect and now he believes it was a faulty PEI build plate. Of course, the original video had spread like wildfire, but I thought it was pretty interesting that he came out with this update, so I hope maybe this kind of chills some of the Bamboo Lab hater crowd down because, <laughs> again, they were pushing this video like wildfire, basically saying, hey, Bamboo Lab sucks, this heated bed, Prusa rules, or you know whatever other company they wanted to go with. But look, he came out with an update. He said he was actually incorrect in his original testing. So let's move on. So Creality has actually been teasing their new 3D printer. They put out this kind of advertisement, it says stay curious, stay creative. What could this be? Of course, it's going to be a new 3D printer. I saw people talking about like, oh, it's probably something with AI. You know, the first post on the Twitter said that. I don't know, why would it be something to do with AI? Anyway, it looks like if you actually look very closely on the bottom, it does say Spark X powered by Creality. Now, the favorite leaker, Toby Ding, has actually put out that he found a profile in the Creality slicer. So you can actually see it says Spark I Spark X I7. Now, I don't know what kind of name this is, or are we now going to actually see that print head that we saw before from Creality when they had all of the leaks when it came to their patents? That thing was pretty complicated, and I will say if Creality actually does come out with another 3D printer or the 3D printer with all of that jazz. I mean, I guess it goes to the case with any Creality printer. You should probably hold off and not be one of the guinea pigs when you order it because a lot of Creality printers have problems up front, at least in my opinion, that's my opinion from what I see on the internet, and it takes a while to get the kinks worked out. Just like the K2 Plus, a lot of their K1 series, their K1 Max, as far as I know, everything I read online, those had a ton of kinks to work out. And I think even with their new K series, like the K2 and the K2 Pro, they were just wildly expensive compared to the rest of the crowd. So we'll see what this one looks like. I mean, all competition is good competition, but hopefully we can see something that's actually interesting versus like just the same thing that everybody else is putting out. Uh, yeah, but I also have seen that some YouTubers have confirmed that they have received some 3D printers from Creality, but uh, no information as, as to like what it actually is. We have another Eufy Make E1 update. This is just crazy. They have shown that they shipped 100 printers. Woo, congratulations, congratulations. 100 units for today's progress. Now, <laughs> the one thing I actually found interesting, so if you've been following along with the Eufy Make E1, they have just been plagued with delay after delay after delay, and they're saying now we're gonna go to every two weeks we're gonna get an update. They had time to develop an order tracker system. How hard was that actually to develop? I don't know, whatever, but you know, they were wasting manpower doing that instead of just putting out two week updates. And I mean, it even says here, the information you entered is incorrect or under processing. Like, isn't every order under processing? I don't know. Anyway, so the interesting thing that I actually saw was we've received many questions about UV Inc. across our community discussions, customer feedback, and Kickstarter comments from why do we need to use your ink to why does UV make UV ink cost more? <laughs> like, okay, first off, that's two things. You're making it cost more and you have to use it. So this was their answer to this. We completely understand these concerns and today we want to explain a bit about the challenges of making reliable quality UV ink why we use our own fully enclosed ink system and how we're working to maintain its quality. 
for those who want a deeper dive. And then they go into, they have this technical appendix down below and it just goes into all this. When I read this stuff, I'm just like, all you had to say was this like, is a wallet decision for your company? We already know that, like, let's be real. I think with these companies, they should say, use other filament or UV ink in this case at your own risk. We would prefer that you use ours, but you still have the ability to use other brands. That's how it should be. That's how I think, you know, even in the relation to Hay Gears Resin, I think they tune all of their profiles. It's extremely easy to use if you use their resin, but they should still afford you the opportunity to use a knockoff brand or whatever you want to call it, given that you want to. That makes perfect sense. For Bamboo Lab, they make it super easy to use their own filament, but they still give you the ability to use other filaments. Same thing with a lot of other companies, right? It just makes it easier if you use their materials, but you still, if you would like, can use other materials. Same thing with like Form Labs, they actually had where I think it originally came out as a closed system for their resin, but they came out with, okay, you can actually use other resins, but our resins are gonna work best. And that's that's what should, I, that's my thoughts on that kind of stuff. Speaking of resin, we actually have the Anycubic Photon P1. And the reason that I bring this up is I've actually been able to use this printer for the last two weeks. It's here in my home. The box is right beneath this desk. I've had it in my garage. I got a full on resin setup now for 3D printers to be able to test any 3D printer, not just FDM, we have resin available to us now as well. So what would you guys like in a video? I'm working on it now. When is it gonna come out? Not too sure yet, um, but anything you guys would like included. Now this is just gonna be from the very basic beginner style resin printer because I haven't resin printed in a while, but my very first 3D printer ever was actually an Anycubic resin printer. So to bring it back, being an Anycubic resin printer is actually kind of cool. So with that being said, guys, what would you like to see in a video? I've been working on it, I've been printing minis, been printing little statues. Yeah, so anyway, that's something you guys can look forward to, but I can't tell you when. So and lastly, guys, I always tell you if you would like any questions answered in the comments down below, I will read my comments, or I read every single comment here on the channel, but I did get one question last week. It was actually from Cart of a John. Now he has been, I, I see him comment on every single one of my videos. I feel like great supporter. So thank you, Cart of John. So with that being said, he asked, what are all the 3D printers you currently own? Now, we're going to include the ones that I haven't even booted up for a while. So I do have, we talked about resin. So I have the Anycubic Photon P1 right now. I have the Anycubic Photon Mono 4K. That was my first resin printer ever. We have the Saturn, I think I have the Saturn S. So one of the older Saturn resin printers. Now let's go into FDM printer. Speaking of Elegoo, we have the Elegoo Centaur Carbon. We have the Cheaty Q2. We have the Bamboo Lab H2S, the P1S, the Bamboo Lab A1. We have the Anycubic Cobra 3 Max. And I think that's it. And we also got the Makara, this isn't a printer, but we have the Makara CNC Air, which we will also have a video on the channel in the near future of that. They were kind enough to send that over free of cost. You know, some of those printers I did also receive free of cost, including the Anycubic Cobra 3 Max and the GDQ2. But if you guys have any additional questions, again, remember, I'm open to anything. They can be slightly personal. I can't answer all personal questions. They can be anything to do with 3D printing, but leave your questions down in the comments below. If you receive a like, that verifies I've read it, and it may be featured in next week's episode of 3D Printing News. With that being said, guys, I do want to thank all of the members we have here on the channel. Let me go ahead and read them out. So thank you to our members, Crunkle, Kevin King, Artie, and Flycut. Flycut actually has a channel here on YouTube as well. He does a lot of designing 3D printed shoes. Go ahead and check them out. With that being said, guys, I do appreciate you all for watching. Till next time on 3D Printing News, remember every single Friday at 6 a.m. Arizona time, remember to hit that subscribe button and that like button on the way out of here. And thank you for watching.